In machine learning and data science, most of the tools boil down in the end to two simple steps. One, write out a probability model. Two, fit the model from data. Other ways of saying fit the model are train the model, learn or estimate the model's parameters. There's one standard fitting procedure, the simplest, most obvious thing it can be, and it's used all the way from simple models that we can solve with pen and paper all the way up to neural networks. We'll learn about it in a couple of videos. But what's perhaps more important than the learning procedure is how we invent probability models in the first place. So what exactly do I mean by a probability model? Let's look at an example, climate data. Just to note, whenever I do data science in these videos, you can check out the code behind it. The code is all stored in Jupyter Notebooks and they're linked to from the course website. In this plot, the dots show monthly average temperatures measured at a weather station in Cambridge, and the gray line shows a fitted model. The model I've used here has a sinusoid plus a long-term trend. Crucially, my model has one more ingredient. It includes a model term for noise. This is what my model really looks like. If you're a physicist like Newton, you want beautiful clean equations to describe the world. But the problem is the beautiful clean equations don't actually describe the data set. The points don't actually lie on the gray line. It's daft to use a model that's contradicted by the data in front of your eyes. Instead, the point of a probability model is to describe the noise. Here, for example, we might say temperatures are roughly on the gray sinusoidal line, and on top of this, there's random variation, but the likelihood of a variation of more than a few degrees C is very small. If there's a reading inside this range, the fitting procedure says, oh, it's just noise, ignore it. If there's a more extreme reading, the fitting procedure says, hey, something's going on, and then it will tweak the model parameters so that the reading isn't extreme. And if there are lots of extreme readings in different directions and there's no way to tweak the model parameters to fit them all, then we as modelers have to say, hold on, that's not how noise is meant to behave. There must be something wrong with my model. And we'll go away and invent a better model. Now, one more thing about probability models. Have a very close look at the gray line in the data scientist's model. What can you see? If you look very closely, you'll see that the gray line is wiggling. What's going on here is that I've got my data scientist goggles on. <laughs> I don't just see the black dots from the real data set. I also see noise. In other words, I see the whole set of alternative universes of what the data set might have been. My model says that it's just chance that the black dots came out the way they did, and they could just as well have been the blue dots. And in each of these alternative universes, there's a parallel data scientist who, when they trained their model, came out with a slightly different answer for the sinusoid. So I don't just say, I think temperatures are increasing at 3.15 degrees centigrade per century. I say, the data is noisy and I don't know the exact rate of increase, but nevertheless, I'm highly confident that it's between 2.5 and 4. That's the real power of probability modeling. All this stuff about confidence, we'll come to that in week three of the course. The topics for the first two weeks will be how we train our probability model and, more importantly, how we come up with a probability model in the first place. That's what the next video is all about.